Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Egyptians and the Grand Canyon The Grand Canyon is one of the most famous natural wonders in the world. Six million people visit it every year, and it is approximately 277 miles long and 18 miles wide at its thickest point. There are many nooks and crannies that haven't been fully explored yet. The Hopi Indians who lived in the region once believed the canyon was a gateway to the afterlife. And there are rumors that this magical place may very well have been the home of an underground civilization from across the planet. Explorers from the 1900s claim to have found evidence that suggests a group of ancient Egyptians were living in the Grand Canyon way before Europeans ever found North America. The shocking discovery goes back to 1909. The legendary Smithsonian Institution explorer G. E. Kincaid allegedly found a series of canyons during an expedition with anthropologist S. A. Jordan. The entrance to the cavern was nearly invisible and very hard to access, but they finally managed to squeeze themselves inside, at which point they discovered enormous caves filled to the brim with artifacts. These artifacts included statues, weapons, granaries still full of seeds, and countless other relics from an ancient civilization. The caves themselves were big enough for thousands of people to live inside, but the most astounding part was that the artifacts were clearly not Native American in design, but looked exactly like ancient Egyptian artifacts. But how did they wind up in the Grand Canyon? That's a mystery that has still never been solved. Nobody knows what happened to the alleged artifacts, and the Smithsonian denies every aspect of the story, and it's been argued that both Kincaid and Jordan were wiped from the records. Some believe this is a massive cover-up to maintain the status quo of human history. But if this was all true, it means that ancient Egyptians could have managed to arrive to the Americas and perhaps lived here amongst the native people. This would add to the list of rumors that ancient people arrived to the Americas thousands of years ago, such as the Chinese and the Sumerians. But of course, it has been impossible to prove if this could actually be true or if this is just speculation. For many, the Grand Canyon is the perfect place to hide a secret passage to another dimension or even to a secret reptilian underworld. Number 9. Rupak The archaeological site of Rupak Marca Culpi is known more simply as the Machu Picchu of Lima. Just like Machu Picchu, this place was built at the very top of a mountain with a panoramic view for hundreds of miles in the distance. And yet it wasn't created by the Inca. It was instead a settlement associated with the Atavillos culture. What makes it so incredible is that if it were in better condition, it would be just as mystifying as Machu Picchu. Yet because of its bad state of decay, very few people even know it exists. Los Atavillos culture emerged after the collapse of the Wadi Empire, sometime around the year 1100, and began to establish permanent settlements throughout the Lima Valley. One of these was on the summit of Rupak Hill. That's at an elevation of roughly 10,000 feet above sea level. Just like Machu Picchu, the main activity here was related to worship. At least it was at the start. Funerary rites were performed on the hill, with the larger complex facilitating everything that went on with the ceremonies. But between 1470 and 1533, Los Atavillos were attacked by the Inca and changed Rupak to more of an administrative hub. Nonetheless, that didn't stop the Inca from absorbing the Atavillos into their empire, leading to the abandonment of Rupak. Number 8. The Serpent Mound The largest surviving effigy mound in the world is located in southern Ohio. It's called the Serpent Mound, and it's the biggest lump of earth anywhere on earth shaped like an animal. It's over 1,348 feet long, built by the Native Americans roughly 2,000 years ago. It was discovered in the late 1800s and excavated several times since, but its origins are still a mystery. Some believe it was made in the year 300 BC. As you may have guessed by the name, Serpent Mound looks just like an enormous serpent. It looks like a snake with its head pointed east and its tail pointed west, curled in a spiral. Between the head and the tail are seven winding coils. In total, with the coils straightened, the snake stretches a quarter of a mile long and at some places is nearly 25 feet in width. The snake itself is overlooking Ohio Brush Creek, less than 80 miles from Cincinnati. And what makes it even more mysterious is that it's directly on the place where a meteor impacted the planet 
300 million years ago. As of right now, experts have no clue what the mound represents. It was obviously made to look like a snake. But whether it was for spiritual purposes, if it had something to do with the comet crater, or if it was more to do with astronomy and the solstices, experts can't seem to agree. Number 7. Lost Roman City Archaeologists were shocked when they discovered the ancient city of Neapolis after a devastating storm. This storm swept through the Mediterranean and revealed stones on the seafloor off the coast of Tunisia. This isn't that well known of an ancient city, especially since it's been submerged for centuries, but it was known to archaeologists as a thriving port of entry to North Africa. Neapolis was originally founded by Julius Caesar before his war against Pompey, also known as the Third Mithridatic War and the prelude to Caesar's civil war. But far more interesting, perhaps, than the city itself is how it ended up underwater. Researchers believe it happened in the 4th century AD, when a tsunami struck the port city and literally sucked it into the sea. It was like a giant sandcastle sitting on the beach, and high tide came in, washing it away and leaving no trace behind. And this wasn't a small settlement by any means. Investigators used drone imagery and radar technology to completely map the old Roman city. It had complex suburbs, streets, and industrial zones. This was a very big metropolis, and it was wiped off the face of the earth by a sudden, unexpected natural disaster. Do you think it's possible that there are other lost cities that can be found along the coast? Could this happen to any current coastal cities? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Number 6. Maya City Citadel Scientists recently discovered a secret neighborhood in one of the largest Maya cities of all time. I am talking about Tikal, located in what is today Guatemala. It was one of the biggest and most important settlements in the ancient Maya Empire. It reached its peak between 200 and 900 AD, with a maximum of around 90,000 residents. In modern times, Tikal is hidden in dense jungle foliage. It's been difficult for researchers to fully comprehend the scope of the city, but using new LiDAR scanning equipment, they have found a new neighborhood. More shocking is the fact that the ruins inside this secret neighborhood are almost identical in style to buildings found in the ancient city of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan is the ancient metropolis in modern Mexico that was built by a mysterious civilization who came centuries before the Aztec. This discovery has led to a lot of questions. Researchers don't know why a neighborhood in Guatemala from over 1,000 years ago looks almost identical to a neighborhood from a city in Mexico, thought to be roughly 1,500 years old. According to Brown University anthropologist Stephen Houston, the neighborhood is direct evidence of interactions between Tikal and Teotihuacan. It may even have been a sort of primitive embassy set up in the Mayan city. But how they met each other and what their business together may have been is still a total mystery. Number 5. The Temple of Hercules Archaeologists with the University of Sevilla in Spain believe they may have just found the infamous Lost Temple of Hercules. They found archaeological evidence that the area between Chiclana de la Frontera and San Fernando in Andalusia was once an ancient coastline much more accessible than it is today. They have uncovered the remains of a massive building almost 1,000 feet long and 500 feet wide. What's truly incredible is that the structure is only visible at low tide, confirming that when it was built, the area would have been significantly higher above sea level. Researchers then used light detection and ranging techniques to see the outline of the submerged structure. While they don't know 100% what it is, it seems to fit perfectly with the historical accounts of the Temple of Hercules. The temple was a pilgrimage site thousands of years ago, visited as recently as during the Roman Empire by Julius Caesar. But somewhere along the line, the temple vanished into obscurity. Descriptions of the temple have it being somewhere in southern Spain, and being so huge and impressive that it shocked and dazzled any who beheld it with their own eyes. It could very well be that a flood or earthquake caused the temple to be submerged, leaving nothing behind for modern archaeologists except a vague outline and some broken stones. Number 4. Stone Heap of the Wildcat Rujum El Hiri translates to English as Stone Heap of the Wildcat. This is the name of a huge megalithic monument in Israel in the occupied region of the Golan Heights. It's hard to say exactly when this mysterious stone circle was made, 
By dating sediment samples and studying discarded shards of pottery, archaeologists believe it was sometime between 3800 and 2700 BC. It's been very hard to get an approximate date. The site itself consists of half circles surrounding a central mound. It took at least 40,000 tons of volcanic material stacked over six feet high to create these circles. The one part that's been dated correctly is the mound in the center. It was added between 1,000 and 2,000 years after the outer circles were originally put down. The mound was made around 1500 BC and once stood 12 feet high. Today, everything here is flat. This place has been worn down by time. And unfortunately, archaeologists can't agree on what it was ever used for. It could have been used by the ancient Zoroastrians for astronomical observations. It could have been a burial site, though no bodies have been found, or it may have been used as a calendar. And it could have been employed in funerary rites to help the dead reach the underworld. Or maybe everything at once. Number 3. The Gigantia Temples The megaliths found at the Gigantia Temples in Malta are some of the biggest of the ancient world, exceeding over 15 feet long and weighing over 50 tons each. For centuries, the locals believed these temples were constructed by giants. In fact, the local legend about how these temples were made involves a giant and some beans. The story says that a giantess who feasted on nothing but broad beans and honey had a child with an ordinary, non-giant man. Related to motherhood and the feminine, it is believed the temples were possibly the site of an Earth Mother Goddess fertility cult. 5,600 years ago, these temples were used in ceremonial fertility rites. At least that's based on the figurines, statues, and other offerings archaeologists have excavated from the site. The temples themselves are still in very good condition despite their age. This is impressive considering they date back to around 3600 BC. That makes the Gigantia temples some of the oldest freestanding monuments anywhere, even older than Stonehenge and the Pyramids of Giza. Have you ever been to Malta? Let me know in the comments below! Number 2. Tintagel Castle Nobody really knows the whole story of Tintagel Castle in the UK. There is very little of the ruins still standing, not much more than a crumbling stone entrance and the hint of walls rising up from the great sea cliffs. Some say it may have been an Iron Age fortress. Others think it could have been constructed by the Romans 2,000 years ago. The Romans definitely did use it for a while, since archaeologists have found signposts along major roads and old coins in the dirt from the 4th century. However, when it was built and its purpose are lost to history. It may have been nothing more than a fancy residence for a local magnate or a formidable shelter for the entire community. Regardless of where it came from, the castle was used well into the Dark Ages. Archaeologists have discovered pottery shards from as far away as Greece, Turkey, and North Africa. Whoever occupied this castle during the 5th century AD was trading with the Eastern Roman Empire. Then, in the 6th century, the castle appears to have been used as the court of King Mark of Cornwall. Shortly after, in 709, the failed kingdom of Dumnonia collapsed and the site was abandoned. It wasn't reoccupied again for nearly 1,000 years, until Richard, Earl of Cornwall, reoccupied it in 1233. The history of the castle from here is well documented. It exchanged hands multiple times during the 1300s, but then it started to drift into a ruin in the 15th century. It was manned briefly in 1580 to guard against the Spanish, and then was left alone. Number 1. The Grottoes of Maiji Shan the Maiji Shan Grottoes are a series of 194 caves cut directly into the side of a cliff in China. This place is arguably the most captivating example of rock-cut architecture in the entire country, complete with over 7,200 sculptures. It's made all the more impressive considering construction began just shy of 2,000 years ago in the later Qin era, circa 384 AD. The caves weren't explored in modern times until 1952 by a team of archaeologists from Beijing. They discovered much about this mysterious place's history. Because of its location along an old route connecting east and west, the cliff grottoes would have overlooked traders moving goods from China's far east all the way to the southern tip of India. It was a crossroads where people from the Indian subcontinent and other parts of Asia moved freely. It also connected to the Silk Road, meaning there was lots of traffic moving into Central Asia and beyond to the Middle East. But why carve a bunch of caves into the side of a cliff? 
Researchers believe cave shrines in China were used to either worship one's ancestors or the natural deities. But when Buddhism came to China, bringing along the ancient trade roads, the shrines became a staple in Chinese religious architecture. In the 6th century, Buddhism exploded in China. The caves, which had been carved hundreds of years earlier, were slowly converted into sanctuaries for Buddhist monks. There was once a community here of over 300 monks living and worshiping in the grottoes. Thanks for watching! Have you ever visited any of these ancient sites? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.